So the question how music affects brand perception um, is a very applied question um, by its nature. So it's relevant for advertisers, people working in the marketing industry and also um, musicians or music consultants who try to sell music to brands uh, to enhance brand perception. So there's definitely a commercial angle to it and uh, if you kind of know the trick how to uh, make a brand perceived as more interesting or more attractive with music then that, that would be a great achievement and uh, I think there's a long history of using music in commercial contexts and with brands and uh, advertising campaigns but research only started uh, about 25 years ago and um, People have tried in, in the lab or in experimental settings to pair certain brands or products with uh, music. And music uh, presented with a brand does change brand perception, um, obviously. Um, but not all types of music work for all products and all brands, uh, but there's a bit more to it. Uh, so you need to know uh, three things. You need to know uh, the values of the brand or the positive values of the brand that you want to transport. You need uh, to know features of the music that you're going to use and um, characteristics of your target audience. So only once you know who you play the music to and who you're advertising to and what uh, uh, features the music has that may be able to transport the positive values of your brand, then putting these three things together uh, would make uh, for an uh, effective use of music in uh, brand perception and advertising. Um, there have been studies from the 90s that looked at uh, musical fit, so the fit between uh, the music that's being played and the brand that's uh, being advertised and found uh, very prominently that the better the music fits the, the product or the brand, the more effective it is in enhancing uh, positive brand perception. So there is this practical line of research uh, in psychology that uh, where people have tried to use different music with different brands, manipulated fit, uh, mani manipulated contexts. Um, but there's also uh, a whole other layer of uh, research or psychological research that contextualizes this, uh, these investigations. Uh, and it does fit within uh, Daniel Kahneman's framework of um, biases and heuristics um, of human cognition, uh, which basically states that uh, in many situations we don't um, make rational decisions, on, in, especially in daily activities. So the chewing gum we buy at the till or the shampoo that we grab quickly from the shelf, uh, these aren't decisions that we think long and hard about because we don't have to and we don't have the time and it's not a, a big investment and uh, there's hardly anything that go wrong. But especially these decisions uh, that, that we make all the time and where we don't invest a lot of thinking, they are open to um, biases and heuristics. So. Uh, they're often not rational, but driven by contextual factors. Um, and contextual factors can, for example, uh, be associations that we make with a specific brand or that we recognize a specific logo from um, previous episodes. And one of these factors that can come into play is uh, music. Music is a stimulus that um, uh, is good for um, introducing a, an emotional context for almost any information that is presented with it. So if a brand or product is presented with music, say on TV or radio or in other contexts, then even though uh, you might not be uh, paying special attention to the music, Music, the music sets a context, so it puts you in a certain mood, it gives associations, it has a style or a genre, or there's a singer, and if it's popular music and you're familiar with that style, it will remind you and you will associate something with it, and um, these uh, associations then get uh, remembered and committed to long-term memory. 
And it's very hard to suppress um, because uh, we don't have any conscious control over the associations that we uh, commit to long-term memory. Um, and then at the point where you're presented again with a brand choice or the choice between different products, maybe this positive asso association that um, uh, was initially triggered by the music when you first were first exposed to the brand will come up in that choice situation and it will uh, just have the effect that you're a bit more likely to choose brand A than brand B just because you've it has been presented with music that you happen to like or that you comes to your mind in that situation again. So that's um, <clears throat> a, a mechanism uh, that makes that describes why music is a very good candidate for enhancing uh, brand perception and why it's uh, particularly useful and effective. And um, it, uh, it does creep under the radar in the sense that uh, we can't really suppress it and uh, it's often connected to an emotional way of processing which is quick and that we don't scrutinize it cognitively. And that's different to arguments that are uh, made as part of the message where, for example, if you state this car is uh, so much more effective uh, in its fuel consumption than other cars. This is something that you can challenge cognitively where you can compare information with other information and you can have your uh, own cognitive defenses against that uh, uh, advertising message argument. But that's not the case with music. So if a, a car um, ad is paired with, say, music by John Lennon and you happen to like John Lennon, do you, there's no cognitive defenses that, that you would build up against that or you might not even notice that, uh, that uh, there is an emotional effect on, off the music on brand perception. Obviously, it's not um, a silver bullet and it, it's usually not... Uh, massive effect sizes uh, that would sway our opinion or purchase intent from one product to the, uh, to the other. And there are many other biases and heuristics that influence purchasing behavior. The most important one being I, I buy the stuff that I bought last week and I was satisfied and happy with it. Uh, but yet, if, if it's especially for uh, small consumer products um, uh, that where there are a lot of uh, purchase um, uh, purchases around the country um, all the time, presenting uh, the brand and advertising with music can make uh, a difference to, to sales. And it can help uh, building up brand perception over time. So emotional brand building is something that doesn't pay off immediately, so you will, uh, a brand wouldn't notice that in their revenues next week. But over time, your brand might uh, develop into uh, a premium brand or a brand that is seen as uh, better or um, um, more attractive or interesting than, than other brand if you've invested into uh, brand building in the longer term. And then you can actually sell your phone twice the price than a competitor phone that might have very similar technical uh, qualities just because people want that brand and they're willing to, to pay a uh, a much higher price than would be justified just by, by uh, the manufacturing price. So in the end, the open questions are, um, can you automatically identify music that would fit a brand? So for example, can you search music databases uh, with a brand profile and would return uh, a list of candidate tracks that would fit that brand? Uh, and that's a really interesting question and again developments from music information retrieval uh, might be relevant here that pick up so-called softer attributes like uh, emotions or mood or uh, human associations that uh, we have with certain types of music and that we might have in a similar way with certain types of brands. And then I think on an emotional level the brand and music could be matched even automatically. But what is really important to evaluate um, whether a particular song fits a particular brand or product. So there should always be empirical testing before um, a TV ad goes out or a brand decides to sign up to a new uh, 
musical audio profile or an, well, a an, an new sonic campaign because you never know how, even if you think uh, a certain piece of music fits a brand, you would always need to uh, validate that with the target audience because your target audience might have a different music taste, might have grown up in a in culturally in a different world, uh, be older or younger than you, and uh, it's very hard to judge what these people make of a particular song and whether they think uh, it, the association between song or music type and brand type is actually fitting and is enhancing the positive values of the brand. And I think that's uh, why it's very exciting and an exciting line of research to uh, look at in, in the future.